The Glazers have no place in Manchester. The Glazers really have crippled Manchester United since they took us over in 2005 on a leveraged buyout. And the latest financial report was released yesterday that ran through what Manchester United's debt is, what Manchester United's revenue is, our wage bill, X, Y, Z. And I want to do this video that I hope that you will share around because it's these sorts of conversations and these sorts of videos where I highlight just a pure and utter greed and negligence as business owners at Manchester United of the Glazers since they took us over in 2005 and why it really is the straitjacket that we need to get rid of somehow. So please, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, consider subscribing. I'm going to dive into it and I've ran through all the numbers. It's quite a lot to get your head around, so I hope you do understand it. But the numbers really are staggering and there's, there's, one, there's one overall point that I really want to raise having looked at them all. Now, if you were to look at Manchester United's gross debt here from 2006, if I was to go full screen for a second, 2006 through to 2022 there, you will see that it started at 604 million. Now, that was the year after they took it. It was actually 558 million on the year that they took over the club. That rose to 604. Look where it is now. 16 years later, that gross debt has dropped by 8 million pounds. Eight million pounds at the same time, in that same time frame, we've had over seven billion pounds worth of revenue in the club from 2012. That's only from 2012, actually, to 2022. And in that 10 year period, there's been over 700, no, sorry, not seven, seven billion in total revenue at the same time as our gross debt has gone down by eight million. And in that same time frame, Manchester United, as you can see here, I'll go full screen again. By the way, big up to, to Swiss Ramble. I'm using all the Swiss Ramble stuff here. I'll leave a link into the, in the description for the full thread that he's run through, but he's an excellent uh, financial expert that really deep dives into the financial reports and allows us to have these sorts of conversations. So well done to you, Swiss Ramble, for doing your work, and please keep doing it. But these are the interest payments that were paid by Manchester United from 2006 the whole way through to 2022. Now, that totals just under 800 million pounds in the same time frame that we have had our gross debt going down 8 million we've paid 800 million on interest repayments effectively the glazers operating like an interest only mortgage that's the way that it's way you're looking at it but whilst at the same time bleeding the club dry these are the dividend payments that they've been taking since 2012. By the time that th th this season goes, because that's going to rise to 33, because they didn't take the full, uh, full 22 million the year before, it's going to total 200 million pounds. So 800 million pounds has left the club on interest repayments. 200 million pounds would have left the club on dividend payments. In that time, our debt has gone up. Our gross debt has gone up in the from the time they took over the club to right now, and in the, so in the in in the space of time where one billion pounds has left Manchester United on interest repayments and dividends being paid into the pockets of the Glazers, the total debt that the club owes has actually gone up. Has gone up from the original debt that they laden our club with, and as I said, they laden our club with it. Manchester United were a debt-free club back before. They took over Manchester United on a takeover. As you can see there, the debt went up to 558 million, rose to 777 million in 2010. That's when they released the bonds. That's where the green and gold campaign came around in 2010. And it dropped, it dropped to 380 back in 2014. But look at it now. Look at that gross debt now. This is the revenue, sorry. The gross debt, 592 million pounds. It's more than the debt that was on the club when they first bought us with their leverage deal. And all this money here that's gone out on interest repayments, all this money here that's gone out on dividends repayments, it all counts for nothing towards reducing Manchester United's actual genuine overall debt that these fuckers have laid in the, laid in the club with. And anybody who isn't a United fan that has the genuine audacity to point towards, look at the signings you make. You can't complain about your owners. A, ignore them. B, if you can't ignore them, show them this video. Show them these numbers. It is mind-blowing how 
how they've been allowed to get away with it for so long and how they've run our club into the ground because it's not just if you look if you're not it's not just about that you take a look at manchester united's wages that we've paid and what we're currently paying we are literally top of the premier league we are spunking our money we are just just doing that like with leonardo dicaprio it's insane how how badly our club has been run for such a long time and you talk about, ah, oh, the Glazers are a great businessman. Ah, uh, that, you know, Ed Woodward did so much to help the corporate side of things. If you take a look at Manchester United's overall value here, this is according to Yahoo, looking at the stock market. Our club launched on the stock market back in 2012 there, around about $12.70 a share. Now it's $12.52. Ten years later, the value of Manchester United is, is, is a little bit less. And that is why I will continue to support any conversations that we might have about Jim Ratcliffe taking over Manchester United, even if it's a pipe dream. I know it's a pipe dream, but because of these numbers, I will continue to keep pushing and hoping that something can change because that makes me angry as fuck. The gross debt has gone down 8 million in the last 16 years at the same time as we paid over 800 million out on interest repayments at the same time as we paid out over 200 million on dividends to these fuckers who just sit there and bleed the club dry. Their, their greed really does no, no end. And it's this business model that's made them, I mean, not enough money, really. They haven't made, they haven't taken that much out given the value of Manchester United. I think they're shit businessmen. Overall, if you're looking at that, they should be making so much more year on year as a yield from a club of Man United's worth. But look, th this is exactly why I'm going to continue supporting anything from the 1958 that they've done with the protests that happened against Norwich and Chelsea. I can't remember the last one. Um, and then is why I will continue to support and push any sort of idea that Jim Ratcliffe might take over. He, might, he probably won't take over Manchester United. But we need to do something. We all need to come together so we can get rid of these of those because they have just turned our club from being this debt-free powerhouse to be in a club where they have taken out a billion and only served to increase the actual overall debt that our club has and this is this is this this is uh, why everybody has such a fear about eric ten Hag because there's been real positivity around manchester united at the moment in terms of our, the right manager coming in, hopefully the, the club actually starting to operate differently below the Glazers level with John Murto, with change behind the scenes. And I still hope to be optimistic about the future. But it's that overall dark cloud that looms large at Manchester United with these fuckers owning our club and absolutely bleeding it dry. I will run through those figures one more time because they are really genuinely so staggering to see that our gross debt has gone up Oh, sorry, gone down by eight million pounds roughly at the same time that we've had over seven billion pounds worth of revenue between 2012 and 2022. At the same time as they've serviced that debt by paying 800 million pounds. So we paid 800 million in interest repayments and our debt's only gone down eight million. That's one percent at the same time as them taking out 200 million from our club. And there are people, as I said, that have the audacity to try and argue that the Glazers aren't that bad. They spend money on players. What are you complained about? You could have worse owners than that. Nah, man. I've already done... Well, maybe you could. I don't care about any other clubs. I just care about my club and the fact that until the Glazers truly do leave and we truly go back to being a club that doesn't have any debt unnecessarily. Look, we, we could be a, a club that has debt like Arsenal because they're paying for a new stadium or Spurs because they're paying for a new stadium. Debts that are put on the clubs because the clubs are trying to become better, better facilities, investment in the club. They've never invested one penny. They've only spent the club's money. And as I said, that just makes me angry. Our gross debt has gone down 8 million at the same time over a billion has left the club. I'll continue to do videos like this. I really do hope you share this yeah, wherever possible. Keep this narrative at the top. The greedy glazers. They've got to leave Manchester United, man. And until they do, we won't get our club back, truly.
The Glazers have no place in Manchester anymore. This group called the 1958 have organised this presentation, uh, this uh, protest at the club's ownership. And I, probably seven or 8,000 United fans marched through with flares, with banners, chanting, we want our club back. Now, I, I tried to speak to one or two, but the, the level of, of hostility among those fans it was pretty steep. And then the gist is from the club, they, they say that their club is now rotten from the, the top down, pretty bare, and that has led to fans to say they want change, that the club is standing it's being allowed to drift and that they would like change so very shortly the game will kick off here in Old Trafford and a great majority or I think the number of those United fans will remain outside at Old Trafford they say until the 17th. When they get here, uh, they won't be going straight into the game against Norwich City for a three o'clock kickoff. They're going to wait till 3:17. That's uh, 17 minutes past kickoff. One minute for every year that the Glazer family have been in charge. Dividends taken by directors was at 1.1 billion. He said, "You know, United fans up, you know, United fans travelling their toes and spending money they haven't got. So all that goes into the mix. So it's certainly not quick fix. And um, I think United fans are unfinished with this."